In this video, I'm finishing up the static elements of the Saki image that I started in the last pixel art video that I had on my channel. I'll be talking about some of my techniques throughout this video. I also want to address immediately that this video title isn't clickbait. Genuinely, towards the end of last year, I found myself asking whether I actually wanted to continue creating pixel art. In this video, I'll explain why it came to that and why it has thankfully remained an integral part of my style going forwards. Let's recap where I left off. I've been using Duex Paint on the Amiga platform since the early 90s and I thankfully returned to using it again in 2018. Admittedly, most of my artwork is hand drawn these days or done in modern applications on my ancient 10 year old MacBook Air, but for pixel art, I still find myself drawn to using Duex Paint on the Amiga. Up until last year, I was mostly creating pixel art that was drawn 100% start to finish in D Paint. But over time this has been changing, as I'll explain. This is my original character Saki Endo, a rad skate rat and she's quite a feisty character, but as soft as the driven snow inside. I wanted to catch some of her rad coolness in a scene where she sat in the passenger seat of her friend Hisao Sato's the Mitsubishi Starion. When I wrapped up last time, Saki was greatly shaded in. Off camera, I finished up the interior of the car and today I'm going to start the process of drawing the background which we will see through the door of the car via the wound down window. The aim is to animate this background, so the work today will seem a bit like overkill for the end result we will get to in this video, but it will make sense once it's animated. The first step was to cut out the remainder of the background that had come over from the hand drawn pencil sketch that this image is derived from. I used just a standard polygon cutting brush tool and then shaded the remainder of the open window area with a lurid green that will act as a bit of a green screen when I come to animate the background. This cutout brush also gives me the overall height that I need to draw the background to. So on the spare page, I can paste this down and draw out a green box that will represent the extent of the background I need to draw. Essentially, I don't want to draw too much more than I actually need to. To outline the animation that I'll be doing in the end, it's going to be a parallax effect with four layers. The front most of those parallax layers being the street lights, followed by smaller skyscrapers, and then taller skyscrapers, and finally on the fourth parallax later, the night sky itself. I'll draw these four layers separately so they can be animated over the top, as of course, Dulux Paint doesn't have layers. The process of drawing this is just a case of gradually building up the detail on the skyscrapers, first by refining the shape of the buildings, and then after that I check the scale back on the main image and proceed with the shading. I create a subtle gradient on the skyscraper by hand, as this allows me to create a smoother gradient than I can by using Dulux Paint's Freeze built-in gradient fill tool. There is no real trick to this, just putting in the time. That is the core trick to anything in life I believe. Put the work in and continue to do it, and you'll find that the results begin to improve more and more over time. Practice makes perfect, as the old adage goes. So why did I question whether I was going to stop producing pixel art towards the end of last year? I actually alluded to this in the last video. I had been struggling with my instructional approach to the videos that I had been creating, it just so happens that I work much better just getting on with my own thing and showing for example on the things I'm actually working on rather than trying to create step-by-step -step instructions. Inside of me, creating beginner artwork had frustrated my desire to work on my own artwork, which I really sorely needed. I needed a drawing practice for one thing, but there were only so many hours in the day. I think ultimately that I work better by showing through example and that this is still an encouraging approach and inspirational all of the same. Another reason was that I had to ask whether I had the wherewithal within me to continue the pixel art videos that I had been creating. I spoke about this last year. Ultimately, I had to reduce the kinds of content I had been covering on this channel as I realised that if I was to ever have any real chance for improving my Japanese, I needed to have the time to study. Thankfully, one year later, after making some tough decisions about the content I produce on this channel, I have made some great pro progress with my Japanese. In the past year, I passed the most basic Japanese proficiency test in December, 
And given that I came with nearly nothing in terms of my ability uh, when I arrived back in March 2020, that was quite an achievement, I felt, to get to that point within eight months, I think it was. It really surprised me. I'm still far from able to talk about everything under the sun, of course, and frequently still have no idea what is being said to me. But on the other hand, thanks to having time to study, I can actually hold a decent enough conversation now, and things are getting a little bit easier day by day. I still have such a long way to go, but at least having the extra time has actually paid off. These days I can handle some pretty far out stuff in Japanese, such as getting a Sony Walkman repaired and getting my bank book fixed. But the simple things like understanding general conversation, being able to use the post office facilities, getting my hair cut the way that I want it, and having a conversation at the same time whilst that is happening, are all things that increase my quality of life here in Japan. These are all things that you will take for granted when living in a country, even in your native tongue or in a language that you're fluent in. But if you step across to another country whose language you're not familiar with, you will soon find that all the simple tasks that you took for granted suddenly become incredibly taxing and very difficult. It's now to the extent, for example, that I regularly attend skate parks and I'm able to have conversations with people, understand the instructions and generally feel less of an outsider. For me, I don't want to feel like an isolated foreigner here in Japan. I want to be able to take part and enjoy life. Some amazing things have happened, like staying at a fantastic ryokan this summer. A ryokan, by the way, is like a Japanese bed and breakfast. And having had this fulsome conversation with the owners the night before, I found myself with their permission painting a picture of sake on the side of this ryokan the following morning. And also, the night before, the couple showed me many of their pieces of sculpture that had worked on over their lives. Essentially, they had curated almost like a museum of all of their bits and pieces that they had been working on. I'm sure I didn't understand every single word that they spoke to me. In fact, I know that I didn't. But I still got the main elements of the conversation and was able to respond in ways which were a bit more than just thank you or wow, that's wonderful. And having that ability to express myself is very important and also, well, frankly, wonderful. I'm still not sure where I want to be in terms of fluency when it comes to Japanese. I think my only real goal at this stage is to be able to understand the majority of everyday conversation and be able to respond back in a fulsome manner. This is not to downplay where I am now, but anyone who has lived in a country where the language is distinctly different from their native tongue or a language that they are fluent in will find that immersion alone won't make you fluent, but it will help. I guess I would describe my current ability as frequently fluently incorrect. So back onto the pixel art itself. The drawing of the light coming from the skyscraper's windows was done by using the line tool and some anti-aliasing to blur the details against the exterior of the building. As you can see, I'm trying not to use up the extra colours in my total palette of 32 so that I can add some additional colours for the background skyscrapers soon. I also took the left handmost building and copied it to the rightmost part of this particular part of the drawing to make sure that I could create a seamless background when it comes to creating the parallax effect in the next video. Once the lines all lined up, I was able to start working on the detail for this building. The last part was to create the background skyscrapers, which I used the remaining colours that I hadn't allocated in the palette, but the process was the same, creating a gradient by hand and then the details of the lights shining out the buildings. So the final reason why I was contemplating the future of Doom Pixel Art was related to this character in some way, Saki, or more specifically to my manga, or comic if you will, that she is from. I came to Japan, in short, to change my life. Being an assistant English teacher isn't a lifetime career, at least I don't think it is. For one, the work, though mostly fun, can be very limiting at times, and also the money is pretty terrible to be honest. Though I can live here in Japan relatively okay, my salary is approximately £16,000 or around about US dollars and that's before all of the taxes and expenses. That's over half of what I used to earn in the UK. Aside from the money, the main reason is I wanted to at least try and steer my life back towards creating artwork. This is a much deeper subject than I'll go into in this video. But I hope in time I can break down some really big things that I've realised in the short time I have been here in Japan. I think I'm blighted in a way by a nature that is always thinking deeply, but slowly I'm beginning to quieten down the inner dialogue that I have 
and making the hard changes that I really needed to face up to. The long and short of it is that I have begun to enact the change by releasing the first two parts of my manga, Future Saviors, the third due shortly. But surrounding that is creating all sorts of artwork and there are only so many hours in a day as I keep on saying. I was struggling to think of how the pixel art fitted into that to be honest. Ultimately drawing the manga takes a lot of time, approximately 8 weeks per chapter at my current work-life balance. And I'm very happy with that work-life balance ratio to be honest with you as I derive much more self-fulfillment from hand drawing and realising this story than I do from singular pieces of pixel art if I'm honest. The breakthrough for me was realising that what I create in pixels doesn't have to be created 100% from scratch in deep paint or similar. It could be based from hand drawn assets or even something that started from a digital source like Photoshop. So this image is a great example of that as it came from a hand drawn source. In fact, this is something I'd love to see the Amiga use for more, not just by myself, rather than it having to be a solely 100% created on the machine kind of affair. Using mixed media to create really awesome artwork that is finished off on the machine. An example of this was the glitch animation that I worked on a while back. I think there is sometimes an attitude towards purity in pixel art, that it must be 100% created from scratch, and this definitely does have its merits and place in the world but there's a whole other world of expression to be found from mixing media. So realising that I could integrate my artwork that I was already working on and for it to be another part of my overall aesthetic really made me fall in love with the pixel art aspect of my work again. Thankfully, as a result, I haven't stopped. I've certainly slowed down on that front what I do in pixel art, but on the whole, my creative output has exploded this year. And who knows what I'll feel in five to ten years time when I could be looking back on some of the most cohesive work I've ever created spread across many mediums. So let's wrap up this video with the final words on the pixel art itself. I have created some idea of how this is all going to fit together when I animate the background and created this sort of dummy background which I'll place against the open window of the car. I'm really happy with how this is coming together now. In the last video, coming soon, I'll take you through how I create this parallax animation. I hope you found this inspirational and I look forward to seeing more of your mixed media artwork created on your Amigas, Deluxe Paint or any other pixel art package. After all, it's never been easier to get your artwork from any source into these packages. There is a bit more to this story to be honest, but I want to keep things positive and succinct, but I'll be addressing some of the deeper issues over time on my channel. Anyway, I'd love to hear what you use the Deluxe Paint for or the Amiga for artistically back in the day, currently, recently, whatever it might be, or what you do on your modern systems with pixel art and mixed media. Tell me about it in the comments and if you have any questions, just let me know. Also last, if you enjoy what I do, there are a couple of ways you can support my ongoing work here in Japan, that be it via Patreon, Ko-fi, or you can read my manga for free, Future Saviors, just by clicking on the links in the video description. Anyway, that's about it. So I guess that all remains to be said as always, is from me and Saki. See you soon. Peace.